the Health Wire Show. Let's talk health with Dr. Yash Kulaji. Today's show is a unique show because we have invited Usha Banerjee, who is the Director of Nursing of all the Apollo Hospitals, and we wish to discuss the role of nurses in healthcare. Healthcare delivery vehicle really has four wheels, and nurses really form the front wheel. We doctors, we go to the patient, see him, talk to him for two, three minutes and go away. But the nurse is there 24 seven. She is providing continuous care. And it won't be wrong to say, ki haath jo rakha usne meri tabti hui peshani par roor tak aagai taab masiahi ki. This is nurse. Usha ji, I know you are now an administrator looking after 10,000 nurses all over India who part Apollo system, you are looking after their education, their training, and the working conditions and everything, but basically you are a nurse. So how do you feel and how did you feel at the time when you were doing active nursing and looking after the patients? What were your feelings? Well, Dr. Gulati, first of all, thank you so much for hosting such a wonderful show and thanks to Healthwire Media for the opportunity. I think that's one of the best questions one could ask a nursing professional. I have started my career as an engineer and then moved on into nursing. And I must admit and tell you that I did not make a wrong decision. While I was a bedside nurse and at the clinical front, I felt that I have been a true advocate for my patients and I've earned the respect which no one could have earned otherwise around the patient. So I think it's one of the most noble professions, a very honorable profession, well paid, and you see where I am today. So I owe it to nursing as my career. Captain Usha Banerjee, let's go back in history. 1854, the war of Crimea, it was noticed that the wounded soldiers who were being looked after by the religious missionaries were doing much better. The death rate was lower, infirmity rate was lower. Looking at that, the British government asked Florence Nightingale to form an organization to mimic this, and she did. And suddenly they found that indeed the infirmity rate, the death rate dropped appreciably. So that means there was a zeal to work. They wanted to serve. But today, what has happened is, over the time, there are hospitals, there are demands of the hospital, there are physicians, their demands, and the nurses, it has become a profession, a livelihood. So you, do you think that the profession of nurses has become too professional? Has compassion taken a backseat? Or that's not true? Well, Dr. Gulati, I think I agree with you to some extent. When the profession was founded by Florence Nightingale during the Crimean War, it was a very altruistic profession. There were no remunerations, there were no monetary gains. But then over the years, healthcare has become very, very complex. And nursing has become a profession where nurses are trained to do complex jobs and earn a livelihood. I wouldn't say that compassion has taken a back seat because the entire ethos and foundation of the nursing profession is based on caring compassion. And yet at the same time, the complexities have asked for more competence. So I do not agree that there is no compassion and courtesy or caring or giving, but it is not altruistic anymore. Definitely it's a profession where nurses want to earn good money respect and a livelihood. And then there are pressures of a complex organization and we've evolved. Why should the society not give them good money so that they can provide the care that needs to be given? Why should they, be, why should they have to worry about that? Well, I think um, that's a good question. If you look at the developed nations, nursing is one of the most preferred jobs. Nurses are paid extremely well. And I must admit that some of the nurses are paid much more higher than even the medical professionals. Unfortunately, in our country, 
we are orthodox, traditional, paternalistic, and we've never probably recognized the worth of the nursing profession. It is a physician-led country. I'll again go back to history. Florence Nightingale, she broke the convention. She came from a very well-to-do family. And that was against convention that somebody would be looking after a stranger. You could look after your own household member, but not a stranger. She broke that convention. In our country, unfortunately, I noticed that most of the nurses, they come from relatively humble background. So to come out of that and then to express themselves, the whole lifetime goes in that. Now, I'm again, you know, when a child is growing up, you ask, beta, kya banna chahte ho? He'll say, main doctor, main engineer, main wakil, main this and main that. Why does a child in India not say, I want to be a nurse? Why there is less pride in saying that I'm a nurse? See, I worked in England for many years, and there, there were many people I met from well-to-do families, and they were nurse. And I said, why did you choose nursing profession? He said, I love it. You know, so why that is not happening in, not only in our country, but in most Asian countries? Well, Dr. Gulati, uh, Florence Nightingale was from a very aristocratic background. She was very influential. She was from the higher echelon of society. And unfortunately, that tradition did not get carried on when it passed on to generations. I agree with you, especially in India, that many nurses come from probably socially backward or a little less economic background. And it is not one of the most preferred or a profession of choice. And I think this is much to do with the community that we serve. People have always acknowledged doctors and never looked at the nurse who's at the bedside 24 seven giving care. I owe this phenomenon to a lot of it is also by the doctors, you know, I'm so happy you being a doctor today is conducting this interview and you advocate that nursing is an important no, when profession. I, when they asked me, I jumped at this opportunity because I believe, I believe that the nurses are not getting the place in society where they should have. So when they asked me, will you do it? I said, I will definitely do it because we all need to bring the names of nurses up. You look at COVID, what happened? You know selfless service yes yes you know doctors got remunerations or doctors got this and that this doctor this did this this doctor did that and you know which nurse did something have you heard anywhere in the news have you read anywhere so they are silent workers they've been working very silently but in fact i'm reminded of a couplet on this ki how the nurses work is that you know ki darya ki mojon se keh raha hai sakute samandar कि जिसमें जितना जर्फ है उतना ही वो खामोश है कि जिसके अंदर जितनी डेथ है जितना वो सेल्फ लेस सर्विस करते हैं उतना वो चुपचाप सर्विस करते जाते हैं दिस आर आवर नर्सेस सो दैट्स व्हाई आई फेल दैट दिस हैज टू बी ब्रॉट टू द फोरफ्रंट नो आई एग्री विद यू एज आई सेड प्रोबेबली द कम्युनिटी वी सर्व इन द डॉक्टर्स हु आर आवर को कलीग्स एंड पार्टनर्स नर्सेस देमसेल्व्स हैव नॉट रेज्ड अ वॉइस द नर्सिंग प्रोफेशन हैज बीन वेरी वेरी साइलेंट but I must also agree that last 10 years, you must have seen a visible change. Slowly, steadily, it is there, it is happening. So I must agree that it is not as bad as it was a couple of years ago. And I'm glad the day is arrived. This very show is testimony to the fact that today media wants to pick up a story on nursing. And you agree that as a surgeon, you do such complex work and such privileged work. You cannot be doing what you're doing if you did not have a nurse who is skilled no and it. competent around. So Usha, that brings me to the training. Do you think the training of nurses in our country, don't, don't talk about only Apollo, I mean, I'm talking overall. Do you think the training of nurses that we are imparting here, is it equivalent to the training in the West in developed countries, especially when Many of the girls come from, as we discussed, not a very wealthy background. They come from government schools where they have not read in English. And I notice all their books are in English, everything. 
So by the time they start learning language, it becomes difficult to pick up what's actually all those technical Latin terms and language and all that. So do you find that that's an impediment? And overall, is our training in the country equivalent to the West? And what do you think should be done to that? Well, I think um, I must admit that the nursing curriculum, be it a GNM program or a BSc program, is equivalent to what is taught in the most developed nations. We've done this study. We, we have looked at the matching of the curriculums and, and they are at par. They taught every subject that is possibly there in the Western countries. Probably what has happened is the teaching methodology, simulation exercises, the laboratory and clinical practices are not similar. And in India, there are many, many institutions that can boast of a great curriculum. And I come from one of them, you know, Armed Forces Medical College. However, a lot of institutions have mushroomed in the country. And you see that not only with nursing education, it has happened to the medical education too. Sure. Yeah. So there has been a dichotomy in the way we prepare nurses at different levels, different states. So that's a big problem. So how are you doing it differently in Apollo Group where, where you are uh, spearheading the program? <clears throat> well, I'm fortunate. I work for an organization that gives empowerment to nurses. The Apollo logo itself is a nurse. Chairman envisioned this 36 years ago. That's the way he thought Apollo should be brought into this country. But what country. about the education? Have you brought any innovative changes? in the way we are educating our nurses? Yes, uh, fortunately we have very good clinical setup. So our students are given clinical exposure. It's not just a classroom, it's a bedside practical. They see, for example, a student is posted in the operating room. She gets an opportunity to witness a complex cardiac surgery or a complex renal transplant or a liver transplant surgery or an orthopedic uh, program. So I think uh, as an Apollo institution, we do complex clinical work and nursing students are integrated from the very beginning into the expectation that they must be when they graduate. And you must have seen that our students stand apart from the rest of them. Do you think that the standard of nursing in our country is equivalent to West or do you think that we need to improve on things? Now, let's be honest about no, it. No, I think I must be very, very honest with conviction. I can say that we, we have a long way to go. We have a long way to go in terms of creating nurse specialists. Like I have my friends in the US who are my classmates, who are nurse anesthetists, they're nurse practitioners, there are specialist nurses. And these are being spoken in the Indian Nursing Council, and I think the Indian Nursing Council. There are nurse through. assistants for surgeries. Yes. And they nurse. open the, the, they make yes. the incisions yes. at some places. Yes. So, and but, they look after post op. But Dr. Gulati, no. unfortunately, because we do not pay as much, most of the talented nurses leave the country. So we are always left with fresh nurses. That so was, we are not able to scale up. That was going to be my next question. <laughs> because I have noticed that so many of nurses that train in your institution um, and which is my institution also, yes. there is a churning going on. Yes. They learn and then they go to either America, Australia, Canada, even to Middle East countries. Fair enough to make a living because as we discussed uh, in earlier in the show that they are not being paid enough here. So it's fair. Other professionals also go. So how do you cope with this continuous attrition that's going on? Do you, are you short of staff? Well, it's an insane job as an administrator, I must admit, mm. because every time you train up a nurse and she's just getting ready and she's there and she's out and I'm, I'm left with absolutely novice nurses. It's a tough job, but then the strength that we bring in to make this happen is because of our training. We have a very well-structured program. The nurses are oriented into the policies. Their expectations are set. And there is a complete shadowing till they become independent to take care of their patients and also to assist our doctors in whatever they do. Another thing, what is the percentage of nurses who are women versus men? 
is abysmal, isn't it? There are very, very few male nurses. Why? Why is it not a profession for men? And remember, if we go back again in the history that during many endemics and pandemics, say cholera or typhus, many male members took up the job of nurses. So why is it that in our country especially, in West, I think there are more male nurses. I've seen many of them. Why in our country, there are very few male nurses? Well, I don't know the correct answer for that, but um, when we started off, there were more women, but slowly the percentage of men have increased in the profession, especially if you look at our operating rooms, our cath labs. Or is it our... that men generally have less compassion? <laughs> then, then you wouldn't be a doctor <laughs> because doctors also no, need I mean, compassion. See, nursing profession is compassion more compassionate. Yeah, because you spend so more time with I the patient. I would expect that many men would also want to serve. Why are they not serving? Honestly, I think why this has happened is not many men got many opportunities to go abroad. Because many girls take up this profession because they want to go outside the country. But now opportunities have started opening up. So more and more men have started to opt for being a nurse. If you look at Apollo itself, a couple of years ago, you might have found only female nurses. Now you see a lot of men. Uh, but yes, the percentage is abysmally low. But there are uh, institutions that give opportunities to male nurses. So you think it's increasing? It's growing, it's growing, it's growing. Captain Usha Banerjee, it was wonderful talking to you. Do you have a message to the nation from the nurses as to what you expect from the country? Well, I'm glad 2020 was declared as the year of the nurse by the World Health Organization. And nurses truly rise up to the challenges because COVID brought in a lot for the nurses. And I'm glad that the limelight and spotlight is put on the nurses today and this show is happening by Health Wire My Media, and you're there here hosting this. I just feel that nurses must be given the due respect and recognition they deserve in the healthcare organization. And for nurses themselves, they should be clinically competent, they should be socially sensitive, they should be ethically engaged, they should strive for safety and have a quest for quality, and should work without fear or favor. And I must add to that, which is actually true, that they have to be very compassionate. Compassion is really the key word for serving the patient. And I'm happy to say that our nurses are actually very, very compassionate. And I have no hesitation in reciting these two lines for them, that zamana aaj bhi unki misal deta hai, nekiyan karke jo darya mein dal deta hai. But at the same time, our society also has a responsibility towards our nurses. We have to give them the status that they deserve. We have to give them the remuneration that they deserve. And we have to give them the respect that they deserve. So tomorrow, when a child is asked, Beta, what do you want to become? He should have no hesitation in saying that I want to become a nurse. So this was wonderful being on this show with you, Usha. And also, I request the audience to please subscribe to Healthwire media channels so you can watch all these wonderful shows. Thank you very much. Thank you.